when I was in the Chicago Symphony, person gave me a book by Philip Bate. It's about this thick, it's blue. It's all about the trumpet and trombone and their characteristic problems um, with intonation. It's a great book. He gave me that. Wonderful. He had just read it. <laughs> now I have to tell you, most trumpet players in the 50s and the 60s and the 40s and the 70s, a lot of them were brought up playing the cornet. And so the problems were not as noticeable. Being a richer, darker, mellower sound, we didn't hear some of the pitch problems as much. And if you did hear them, it's much easier to lip the notes. Trumpets lock in. They're slotted. Cornets are wider. You can slide more. Now the reality of this is that today's cornets and trumpets, especially C trumpets, are actually very similar. We all know what we base the, as far as the difference between the trumpet and cornet. It's based on the, the definition has to do with how much conical versus cylindrical tubing, right? Are you all with me? A truly conical instrument would probably be a horn, French horn. If you really want to be truthful, you should call it a horn, not a French horn, because they're actually using German bells. So most horn players uh, resent that it's called a French horn, but you all know what I'm talking about. You cannot take a horn slide, tuning slide, and turn it around and put it in. Because the slide itself is conical. The true cornets, that some of them were at the turn of the century, you could not take the tuning slide off and turn it upside down and put it in. Because it was already getting larger. But my cornet, an old ambassador that I started on, you can do that. That was built in 1950, 1949. Um, and my stroking C cornet, same thing, it's cylindrical. I want to tell you right now something that you may not be aware of. I said that the C trumpet is brighter than the B flat trumpet because it's shorter. But in reality, it has a little higher percentage of conical tubing than the B flat. So it's actually more of a cornet than the B flat. And you know why people use corn uh, C trumpets? in the orchestra, why this started in the 40s and the 50s and 60s in the orchestras. It was because it's a more versatile instrument. It's easier to go this way and that way. It's easier to sound like a trumpet, and it's easier to sound like a cornet than the B-flat trumpet. Plus the fact that it made you feel a little more secure in the high notes. <laughs> Every trumpet player is always choosing smaller instruments to be more secure, unfortunately. And unfortunately, we give up sound. I'll get back to intonation, but this is an important issue. The evolution of the trumpet, <coughs> one looks back at it from the very long, what we call natural Baroque, of course they didn't call them those, no, in, back in those days, it was the trumpet. <laughs> it wasn't any other choice. It was a very long instrument. The C natural trumpet was twice the length of this. The B flat, okay, it wasn't, there really weren't any B flats, but the D was twice the length of our traditional D trumpets. Um, it was probably 90% cylindrical. I mean, if you ever look at it, I should, I should have brought one down. It's just cylindrical. There's a lead pipe about that long. And for the length of the instrument, that's way too short. So consequently, the first two, three partials are unbelievably flat on those instruments. Now, if we would change the lead pipe, it, we could fix some of those things. But to keep it cylindrical, they didn't. The flare of the bell probably is at the most that long. Now, for an instrument that's probably about 14, 15 feet long, that's not much flair. So that's why it sounds very brilliant. How many of you have played a Baroque or natural trumpet? How many of you heard one up close? Your concept of brilliance, does it fit with the sound of that instrument? Especially if you hear somebody like Christian Sil Perkins, maybe, or uh, some of these players. Paul Plunkett. Doesn't fit, does it? That's because your your idea of what brilliance is isn't correct. Most of you think of brilliance as bright. I'm sorry, Joe and Mike, you guys have seen some of this stuff. Probably. And maybe some of you some of you also. I'm going to show you brilliance. This is brilliance, and it's an instrument that is not brilliant. The piano. It's not exactly like a trumpet. The trumpet is the only brilliant instrument in the orchestra. By definition, so is the trombone. 
but being down an octave, it's hard to really hear that brilliance. And remember, today's trumpets are more like cornets than they used to be. I started talking about the evolution of the trumpet. Um, the very earliest valve trumpets were the long E flat F trumpets. If you've ever seen one, it looks like a B flat, only it's a lot longer. It looks like a choo choo train engine. You know, it's, it's like all wrapped up in this, like that. It's much longer. That was used, Mahler, Tchaikovsky, by all these composers, Sanson, in the uh, last part of the, of the century. Orchestra, orchestra players played F trumpets before they played B-flats. When the B-flats came in, imagine an instrument a fourth higher, a fourth shorter. That's comparable to C players uh, picking up an F trumpet, a small F trumpet. Imagine the difference. And you imagine the security of accuracy. <laughs> but a loss of brilliance, because it could not possibly be the same high percentage of cylindrical tubing. Just like going from the B flat trumpet to the C trumpet, it is less a trumpet, less cylindrical. Measure it sometime. OK, brilliance. If you look up in the dictionary um, and get a really good definition of brilliance, you'll find Adolf Herzl. No, I'm just kidding. Probably the most brilliant trumpet sound in his earlier years that the world's probably ever heard. Absolute brilliant sound. Without working hard, projection. Beautiful projection. That's what the trumpet, that's the definition of a trumpet. It's the military instrument. It's the one that's supposed to ride over sometimes. Careful guys, gals. Sometimes. Beautiful brilliance you don't have to lean on. And that's the spin that Barbara was talking, has been talking about. It's the spin we work on to activate that brilliance. We use vibrato, it's a little cheaper. Um, tricked, you know, but it does the same thing. 